clothes. You know, what shall we wear is actually the meaning of my name. My name's Tiva Lenji. Tiva's actually short for Tiva Lenji. It's a Zambian name, and um, it means what shall we wear. And so when Brian was praying about who was gonna preach what in, in this festival, and he gave me this portion of scripture, he, he really heard from the Lord because this passage of scripture literally has my name on it. That's amazing. And I know what you're probably thinking now is why on earth did your parents call you, what shall we wear? <laughs> my sister actually is, is called, it's called Tio Nenji. She's called, what shall we see? I always thought that was a bit cooler, but I don't actually fully remember why I'm called What Should We Wear. My mom's here, maybe you could ask her, but maybe it's a prophetic mandate that I would help teach the church about taking off the old and putting on the new, I don't know. But for those of us who have heard the voice of Jesus and are being taught by him, like verse 20 says, and have got this new life with him, this eternal Zoe life, this, this wonderful fullness of life, this adventure that we have walking with Jesus, there is a change of clothes that is required. There is a taking off, off of the old and putting on, off, off, putting on the new. And that old is a load of attitudes and thoughts and practices and, and paradigms that we used to walk in before we heard the voice of Jesus calling us out of darkness and into his glorious light. And when Paul says take off the old and put on the new, what he's actually saying is we need to act it out. We need to make it visible to the watching world around us. He lists out the new, the new clothes in Colossians chapter three, verse 12. He says, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and so forth. Bind it, love, and put on love that binds it all together in perfect harmony. I mean, we haven't got time to go into, into all those items of clothes, but the key, the key verse in your Bibles in this point here is how do we change that set of clothes? How do we take off and how do we put on the new? And the key verse is verse 23 in Ephesians 4, and it says, we need to be made new in the attitude of our minds. It's the renewing of our minds. We need to fill our minds with the truth of God's word, his power, his promises. We need to read it, eat it, sleep it, drink it. We need to meditate on it. We need to declare it. We need to sing it. We need to claim those promises like Sarah talked about. And we need to fix our minds on the realities of who God is and who God says we are in Christ Jesus. Paul says in Colossians 3.2, we need to set our minds on things above, not on worldly things, but on things above where Christ is seated, where we are seated with him. Paul says we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, for what is seen is temporal, and what is unseen is eternal. You know, Carl Beach talked about how, how, how career and comfortability and cars and all of that stuff can so easily derail us and distract us from living from that place of being positioned with Christ in those heavenly realms. And our old nature, our old set of clothes, which Paul tells us to take off in this passage, are deceitful desires. They are out to deceive us on a daily basis. And unless we're filling our minds with truth, we are susceptible to the deceit of our old nature. Lies and deceit can only grow in the absence of truth. And so we need to fill our minds with the truth of God's word. My old sinful nature, my old set of clothes, desires to deceive me on a daily basis. In fact, sin itself is deceitful. Hebrews 3.13 tells us that, that, that we must encourage one another on a daily basis so that none of us are hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Sin itself will, will in that moment make you think that you're gonna scratch that itch or you're gonna meet that need in your heart, that longing in your heart. It will deceive you into a pit. It will deceive you into addiction. It will deceive you, deceive you into dark places. And my friends, we have enough deep-rooted sin in our old nature to keep us deceived for the rest of our lives. Even if Satan was to drop down dead, Satan isn't the issue in this passage. Our old nature, our, my, my carnality, my flesh, my old set of clothes is the issue in my marriage, in my parenting, in my leading, in my relationships. And it's the same with you. 
Now don't get me wrong, Satan can definitely come and amplify things, and I believe there's you know, warfare, and we're gonna hear teaching from Ephesians 6 about the warfare and our battle not being against flesh and blood, but in this passage, we're dealing with a far closer to home enemy that actually lives inside of us, our old nature. You know, Galatians 5.17 says that we are actually walking conflict zones, that we have a battle going on inside, that our old nature and, and the spirit of God who lives inside of us are in constant conflict. Galatians 4.6, when we gave our lives to Jesus, the spirit of God, God sends the spirit of his son into our hearts that we cry, Abba, Father, that we are children of God. And in that moment, he wages war on our old nature, that old set of clothes. And whichever one you feed is going to grow. So let me ask you, what are you filling your minds with? 